Hello, Booksies. Welcome back to your ASMR session. So if you are new here, I would love if you would take a quick second to subscribe down below, tap the bell and hit all notifications to get notified of new content from me every single day as I upload every single day. I also have a website which I will be reading from very soon, tonybomboni.com. If you would like to book my services for me, please check out my last video I just made that explains my website in massive detail so you can check that out and see for yourself everything I have to offer on there and much more. So today I will be reading from my blogs which I have as a part of my website tonybomboni.com I have six blogs, I'll be reading them all today for this separate video um, so here we go. The first blog is called Meditation, Properly Connecting to Source. So go on my website, go on the sidebar, click blog, and you'll find that blog. And then um, you can follow along, read along as I speak as an audiobook type of format. I know a lot of people like that, especially when I read my book, Finding Your Alignment. So now I'm going to read my blogs. So here we go. You've heard it all before. Someone tells you to meditate more because it will help you connect. But what does connection really signify? How can we tap into this never-ending energy source of connectivity? Is it really as easy as closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, and seeing things? I'm here to cut through all the sidetrack garbage and get straight to the point so you may clearly understand what meditation is all about. There's no need to cross your legs, put your arms out to your sides and your knees, and hum or chant anything. Allow the stereotypical observation of meditation to leave your mind right now. What meditation really is, is any connection to something greater than your understanding or current knowledge. There are energetic manifestations of thoughts produced during your connection, and you will begin to see visuals of what it is you are connecting to. Doesn't make sense? Allow me to explain further. What do you see are images of thoughts rummaging through your mind while you are practicing meditation. Whatever has been on your mind lately will be portrayed through a unique manner in random images floating through your brain. These images play like a movie and give us feelings of uplifting energy which are produced through the exercise. There may also be visuals of something you have long forgotten, such as a chore you had to do around the house. While you are delving deep into the mind, Anything that may have slipped your mind earlier will probably come back and show itself during meditation. Now this is crucial because typically the point of meditation is to clear the mind and allow some of the unconscious to come through. When we connect to the energy unknown, we are seeking for answers. The whole purpose of connectivity is to find what we are looking for at that particular time. We are seeking the sensation of unity and oneness of all and to uncover the truths which allow us to feel better as a whole. Since the purpose of meditation is explained, here's how to access this endless energy source of knowledge to begin with. Find any location in which you feel safe, comfortable, peaceful, and won't be distracted by anything. If you feel drawn to do this outside or in is irrelevant, so long as you feel good enough in this particular place to practice this exercise. Begin by sitting down against anywhere comfortable. The location is absolutely insignificant. If you feel alright in the place you're in, that is more than enough, as you may have to sit there for upwards of half an hour. Start by closing your eyes and allowing your mind to wander. You may take deep breaths if you choose, but it is not essential at this stage. Acknowledge all of the ruminating thoughts, but don't take them personally or think on them too deeply. Simply allow yourself to see the images like a film playing in your head, nothing more. When you begin seeing whatever you're thinking on while sitting in solitude, you'll begin feeling different, perhaps lighter or even lightheaded. Don't be alarmed during this process, and it is normal to feel this way. I typically find myself feeling vertigo-like symptoms while meditating, especially if it is intense and beyond my typical expectation. Every now and again, you may go beyond your comfortable boundary that you place on yourself, but you should never expect what will occur as meditation is as random as the winds blowing through the air. To make this work for you, you need to let go and let the body wander through these motions. At first, the deeper you go, 
the more you may begin feeling euphoric, so much so that it makes you nauseous. If this occurs, feel free to take a pause, drink a glass of cold water, and continue at your own comfortable pace. Meditation is meant to be an exercise like any game or sport performed. The more it is done, the more expertise knowledge is acquired so that one may delve deeper into the subject to gain more. Once you feel there are an enormous amount of thoughts coming up or you feel really warm, take a deep breath or several. Do just enough to where you feel comfortable in your body again and continue seeking within yourself to find more answers. This may not make any sense to you right now, but as you do this practice, you'll know what I'm talking about. You will feel the surplus connecting cord of the universe approaching down through the crown chakra above your head. This chakra is an energetic vortex which allows access to energy from above and will provide for you vitality, life force, wisdom, and a constant stream of energy like a cord would for an electronic device, for example. The plug will forever be accessible and there will be tapping into this energetic force whenever you feel necessary, such as through meditation. The higher self within us all will come into contact with the body and give visual clues to what one needs to focus on next. When access to intense visuals and deep breathing occurs, you're in alignment with true freedom of how meditation should feel like. Let the energy flow through your body as long as necessary. My favorite sweet spot is 10 minutes, as any more time would allow you to disconnect from the world around and forget about everything in the tangible. If you wish to discover how this feels like, you should not feel afraid, as fear only blocks you from accessing the higher self within. In whichever way you meditate is relevant, as you must always do what works best for you and your level of understanding. I am simply providing an easy, accessible way one may replenish their depleted energy and fulfill their purpose through aligning with the visual exercise and seeing what is best for their plan of life. Meditation can provide answers you would not even expect you needed to see and feel, and that is the beautiful thing about it. One should meditate daily in order to truly master the artificialization within oneself. To know yourself is to know everything around you. Good luck. That was my first blog. <laughs> Hard to believe I wrote this stuff three years ago. Wow. It feels like like looking back, like, well, someone else must have wrote this. This is um pretty cool. Then my second blog, Are They a Friend or Foe? So I'm gonna read that now. And they're mostly like four or five minute reads, my blogs, they're pretty short. Have you ever had that one friend you could always count on? They'd be there for you. When you are sick, feeling sad and alone, or even when you just wanted to make a spontaneous phone call at four in the morning. These types of friends are what I call true friends. And definitely those quality people you want to hold on to in life. One should never remain friends with someone just out of pure use for one's own advantage, but to find that one quality person who can always be there when times are rough and take a toll. I've had a recent encounter with someone who would always talk about me, even after I confronted them not to. They would tell their friends about me on social media and even family members who don't even know much about me to begin with. It frustrated me for the longest time, and I just had to let this individual go for my life. I wished them well, forgave them through meditation, and moved on. I felt much better ever since, as they have taken a couple years of my life away from me. Keep in mind that you should never allow anyone to bully, harass you, or take advantage of you for prolonged periods of time. If someone chooses to pick at you temporarily, it is all at their own discretion and free will. However, prolonged annoyance from the foe can lead anyone down the path of wanting to remain alone and away from people, and assume that everyone is just as frightening. I chose to let this person take control of my life for a while, until I realized the power within me, and that I wasn't going to stand for someone who always wanted their way. Don't let the person win and instill fear and a lack of trust within you. A friend will never demand of you something, and will never prioritize their wishes over yours. 100% of the time. Friendships are like relationships and require a fine level of balance, mutually agreed upon between the two of you. If one person decides to chip in on the dinner tab one week, then it is respectable to assume that the other friend would have to contribute the next time around. But if the demanding friend is never bringing their money with them to nights out, and often assumes you would end up paying, then in this case, they are not being a responsible friend and understand the concept of balance. Here are some signs they are friend or foe. Number one, I feel like I'm reading a BuzzFeed article. Jesus Christ. No compassion or remorse for your feelings. That's number one. There are always people out there, such as in my experience, who will not understand what emotions or feelings really are. 
They will cry about something, but not consider when you are feeling any range of emotion. It will pass their shoulder like nothing happened. One day you are upset because you missed the opportunity to buy a ticket to your favorite concert. You call up your alleged friend who dismisses your phone call. You don't hear from them for a couple of days. And finally receive a text saying they were busy. You call them up, tell them what happened, and they tell you that you called at a bad time while they were asleep. They quickly tell you they have to go and you don't hear from them for a few days. This is a perfect example of a dismissive friend. One who just does not understand how you are feeling at any given time and probably doesn't care to, to get to know you more and learn about the human experience of emotion. Either I was really bitter during this time or that friend really hurt me. Honestly, I don't even remember who this person was anymore. They give vague hints of their horrible mannerisms but somehow passively aggressively show them to you. So you would not be able to pick up clues to how horrible of a friend they really are. Number two, they would drive miles to see you. A true and compassionate friend would drive across states and even countries to see their friend, especially if it is a scenario where one was left to be in the hospital after a surprise ailment. I know I wouldn't hesitate to go see my friend if they were left bedridden. They would be awaited with an entire bouquet of floral arrangements, a note card, balloons, and baked goods. This would perhaps be the expected thing to do, but you'd be surprised that some people would just text their buddy, OMG, get well soon, prayers. <laughs> Number three, excuses, excuses, and more excuses. <sighs> that one person who never has time for you, can never hang out, and can't even respond to you in a complete sentence over chat is someone who you should avoid as they are not meant to be there for you. There is a difference between a friend and acquaintance, someone who is very brief with you and knows you only from what you say to them, which is also very brief. The energetic bonding and connection between two people has to occur naturally, and if there is nothing to talk about, then there is no friendship residing between you two. The friendship bond must also be formed by committing a side time for catching up every so often. If one person always makes excuses for why they can't come to X event, then let them go and do not take anything personally in any of these scenarios I mentioned. They were simply not intended to be in your life at that time. Who's to say they won't be later down the line? Never lose faith. You will find the right one eventually if you haven't already. Well, this seemed, okay, if I'm honest with you, very stone cold at the time and how I viewed friendships as. This is not necessarily what I agree with now because just because someone cancels on you doesn't mean they're not your friend. I may have worded it better, actually, than that. I wish I did. Maybe a revision. A revision is necessary. A simple smile word or visual makes you cackle. That's number four. If the both of you have some form of code or secret message only the two understand, then you've probably already built a strong bond with this person and there is not much to fear. Usually there would be secret handshakes, which is so early 2000s in my honest opinion, or something that would make the two of you burst out cackling in an instant. It could be a smile that makes the two of you laugh, a word that you don't understand why exists but make you giggle, or even when your friend shows you something that you find funny each and every time which related to an experience you both shared that ingrains in your minds. My old friend and I had to read Memoirs of a Geisha for a senior year of high school English class. The word challenge came up in the book frequently to emphasize that the Geisha had to perform a certain task. When we became busy with school, my friend and I would joke about how we had a challenge to do, but we would say it really loudly. It doesn't sound funny, but at the time, the scenario of our lives, it was the perfect combo to make us burst into the laugh every time. It doesn't make sense to you, but to me and this person, it did. You also have something that I would question, but you would find hilarious with your friend. If this exists, you have a friend, at least for a long time. I think these are some pretty basic examples, but something I wanted to talk about and get off my chest when it comes to friendships. There are a plethora of things I can go into for this blog, but may perhaps leave it alone for another time. Don't stand for someone who makes you feel bad or uncomfortable. Anyone who always tries to bring you down and says you're wrong is a toxic person who needs to be let go of for your own sake and sanity. Immediately. People can be very scary, but don't let their fears encompass you as well. Follow your heart's desire, and soon anyone you come across will be a great person to be around. As long as you don't fall in the trap of the same old bad friendships, you will be just fine. So that was the second blog. The third one is Manifesting Effortless Abundance and Wealth. Ever wish you could draw in money without even trying? Are you seeking for a surprise check in the mail to win a scratch card or even grow your businesses? The law of attraction has been my best friend for the past few years ever since I discovered that it works in 2012. One day I was a depressed mess. It was November of 2011 and I was just 16. At the time I felt miserable inside. Nothing was going my way, neither in school, at home, or any luck in getting a part-time job. 
I was unhappy with my life, the way I was living it, and the fact that I had $90 to my name. Yes, I was still a teenager living at home with my family, and there is not much opportunity for a minor. However, I never felt like that had to be the case for me. I wanted to be successful at a young age and have everything. There was always a feeling in me that my negative situation did not have to occur. I was just making it happen for myself. I logged into Skype to talk to my friend who I was working with at the time to try and grow my channel. She had provided me much advice and mentorship, which I cannot repay even today or express my gratitude towards. She had mentioned a documentary called The Secret and highly advised me to listen to it. <clears throat> there was no knowledge whatsoever beforehand about any of the things mentioned in the film. After witnessing it, it changed my existence for eternity. My world suddenly looked more beautiful and more alive, and I felt uplifted and more aware of my surroundings for what they really were. I was looking at the world with the wrong pair of eyes all along. The amount of joy that overflowed my emotions was inexplicable. I cried out of pure happiness and went to hug every one of my family and friends that I came across the next day. Smiling more, thinking only of positive thoughts, and believing in myself were key that year to my growth. I became a completely new individual and people noticed I appeared happier and f more filled with a light. There were still times when I was out of alignment with my higher self. However, once I stabilized my feelings and managed to feel the law of attraction work for me, things became even clearer. I began manifesting more. Simply said, life just began to flow easily and massively towards me. Money is energy, so I always knew I could draw this without much effort. It is in my DNA and it is something I can create for myself, just as anyone else can, if they believe it. If you are a magnet for money, you will draw it to you. So for example, just repeat daily, I am magnetic to the energy of wealth, and draw it to me easily and effortlessly. There are many exercises you can practice in the morning to start your day off right, or in your spare time. Here is a video you may listen to while meditating, which has helped me a lot. You may even receive some ASMR from it. Placing words into your subconscious for success can also help boost you into the life you desired all these years. Here's another video to listen to while cooking, cleaning, taking a walk, and doing mindless activity. You don't even have to pay attention to the words being said as it will forever enter your subconscious mind if you choose to reprogram your thought pattern and be open and allow the universe to help you. You can make this effortless manifestation work for anything you desire, such as a loving relationship or manifesting your dream vacation. All you must do is have faith that your desire will come to fruition and believe that you are fully capable of receiving. Never ever have a number which limits your mind to a ceiling, and never speak words which do not serve the purpose of fulfilling your wish. Share with the world only words in which you are pertinent to your situation, and do not associate with that which only brings your vibration down. There are plenty of motivational speakers you may listen to in your free time, such as Abraham Hicks. Everyone overall states similar realities, however there are an abundance of information to learn from these light workers. If there is a will, there is a way. Have no fear for that which you want. That which you need will come to you, regardless. It is the inevitable. There is nothing you may do to stop this action of God. Your will is always answered, and they are always listening. Never forget this. Most important of all, never block yourself further by holding on to that which you are gifted. Give with love, and you shall forever receive abundantly. Once you work day to day on your goals, ideas for helping you get to where you need to be in life will just come to you without much effort. You no longer must work day in and out to receive what you please. If you meditate, visualize that which you already have want, then it will come. The only effort you need to place is in programming your brain into believing this newfound wisdom, which is there to serve you. Know entirely in your heart that this works, and you will make it work for yourself as well. You are fully capable, and deep inside you know that you are. There are other methods I like to use to help this system of belief work for me, but I will share them in another blog post as I don't like to give away too much information in one sitting. Looking back, I can confidently say that my past methods have worked for me to garner whatever it is I desired. I've managed to effortlessly manifest money, relationships, friendships, meeting great people, getting business offers, and moving to locations which were perfect for my divine right. Most of these things just happened to come along with what which I was trying to manifest all along. Because the powerful intent of my will drew in these people and situations which overall helped me to get where I needed to be right now. Always remember you still will still have to put in some physical effort into making your goals happen. However, it doesn't have to be as hard as your mind may think. The word hard is a creation of man and does not have to exist in this realm. It only appears if you believe it too. Best of luck to you, workers of the light. May all your success come instantly and for eternity, as everyone has the right to achieve anything by divine law. Wow. I mean, 
mean not to boast, but that was pretty accurately good. I agree, and that actually like really revalidates something I'm feeling today. And I didn't even realize even the pictures I posted in there. I'm like, whoa, that was like really my subconscious working at the time to kind of like looking back, read this three years from now, looking back, like, whoa, you know. I felt something powerful just now, like whew, just like a nice reminder. Get some water here. Kind of reconfirming what you know, but sort of um, just really like whew, magnetizing the intent. And then the next blog is what are your favorite ASMR triggers? Here's some of mine. There are plenty of ASMR sounds to choose from and enjoy. Some are soft, gentle easy to listen to, while others are harsh, crisp, and plain loud, plain loud. People have plenty of ideas from what their most preferred sounds are. But do they really know what their favorites are? Well, this blog is here to remind you that there are more out there than the traditional ones we see on YouTube. If you are new here, an ASMR triggers an object which can produce sound to enable ASMR in the viewer. There are separate definitions of triggers or triggering. It can either mean something that can provoke someone and make them frustrated, or it can be your best friend. <laughs> In this case, it is the best possible scenario, so let's just focus on that definition. I'm going to start off by listing my absolute favorite ASMR triggers in no order. They are as follows. And these are bullet pointed, flashing light, pencil or paper, rice on seashells, coffee beans on wood, keyboard or phone typing, tapping nails, magazine page flipping, hair brushing, scalp massage, Mouth sounds, ocean waves, food eating, palm tickling, makeup application, plastic crinkling, role play scenario, hand movements, any form of energetic work, healing, card shuffling, zipper sounds, whispering makeup brushes, feathers, and reading from a book. There are plenty of triggers for ASMR artists to use to their advantage, which I know someone will. 24 triggers for each hour of the day. If someone made a 24 hour video and spent an hour per trigger, I would be in not only ASMR heaven, but a I would not be a very productive individual either. Nevertheless, I will be creating a video like this soon. I cannot promise a 24-hour session as there wouldn't be enough memory space, but I can promise these will be used in one video soon and I never break a promise. Now let me explain why some of these triggers are my personal favorite. Note that these are all great points to keep in mind if you'd like to start your own ASMR channel or when researching for your favorite triggers, starting with rice and seashells, which I just recently filmed with. This must be one of my long time top five. The way the delicate rice grains fall upon the hard yet shallow surface of a seashell creates the most blissful sound imagined. It makes music to the ears, but still falls harsh enough to be sort of irritating at times. However, if done right, you have a genius assortment of ASMR using the power of nature to combine and make beautiful sound. Coffee beans on wood is another nature on nature type of trigger, except the wood would be a wooden table below the coffee beans to support it and keep them stable. When I pushed around coffee beans with a wooden spoon on a table, it made such a harsh but stimulating sound effect that it's difficult to describe in words. All I can say is that it helped me relax, and I don't normally become triggered by my own actions. I know when this occurs, it is a good ASMR sound. Tapping nails works efficiently on nearly any surface. My all-time favorite is when someone has extra long nails that are pointy and sharp. I'm talking about just came out of the nail salon sharp. <laughs> I want to hear... Even the pointiest of nails slamming against a glass surface or a phone case. With every single mind-jarring tap, I want to feel the tingles inside of my head explode and spread through my whole body. To feel this effect, nail tapping on anything does it for me, and fast too. Magazine page flipping only works for me if done slowly and intently. Even better is if the performer of the trigger licks their finger briefly before flipping the page. That's the only time I accept finger licking. That's it. Nothing else. Glossly textured and thick pages are the best to produce the triggering sound, but the worst are thin and flimsy pages as they make too much sharp noise. Some paper types don't grip on the fingertip right and take too much effort to flip and separate from each other. Other pages rip easily and can literally tear right through your relaxation. Yikes. Ocean waves are pleasant at times, however, not something which enables me to feel ASMR. Quite frankly, this trigger is only good for trying to meditate along with. If the waves are too loud and roaring, it does nothing for me. They must splash against the sandy ground in a gentle manner for it to trigger even the minor amount of ASMR. Water is an excellent trigger, but not often when mixed in with gravity, especially when you must use the bathroom. Palm tickling triggers a great memory of childhood. 
as friends would love to play this game where we would have to tickle each other's palm and pull away in time before the other person had their wrists smacked. It would be both triggering and terrifying, but the mix of suspense and sensation of gentle motions under the hands created the perfect storm of tingles on my scalp. The minuscule hair on the back of my neck would even stand up. Role play scenario is to this day a huge trigger and it can be any scenario. Just the fact that the artist is intently acting out a character gives me ASMR. I'll be watching a movie, think about how the person is not really that character, only someone playing a role, and it will trigger my ASMR. How weird is that? I really can't explain this phenomenon, but it is true. I guess I have not ASMR fetish for roleplay. Any form of energetic work or healing will indefinitely trigger some form of ASMR within me. As I like to believe I am an empath and feel sensations all around due to my sensitivity of surrounding healing energies or any type of work that causes energy to move around the room will induce the feelings of ASMR along with it. I suppose this is because the energy waves are moving around my body and thus giving me tickling sensations. Reading from a book will only work if the person is entirely focused on what they are reading. Whether it is a short paragraph or an entire page, just the fact that I'm listening to someone reading with full concentration on the story will induce ASMR inside. I like to know that someone is paying close attention to something and feeding me information. The fact that special attention is paid to sharing knowledge while unintentionally producing relaxation invokes pure nirvana. I hope you enjoy these explanations that they help some of you be more aware of how triggers work and why they are so effective for the ASMR world. I only listed the top 9 of the 24 which I felt needed more explaining due to lack of context or preference for the trigger. Next time you are seeking ASMR online, make sure to be mindful of why you really like a sound and try it for yourself. You might just give yourself ASMR. Next is finding happiness and inner alignment. Alright, to start this blog off, I wanted to share a video I've recently made and I linked it above regarding happiness. It goes in depth about how I find myself to be happy at times, what makes me feel happy nowadays in my overall viewpoint of life thus far. Compared to an older video of mine, I find it fascinating to see the vast distance and resemblance between the two videos. Take a look for yourself and you will see how quickly perspective can change in only a matter of five years. And then I linked another video on that same subject below. Once you realize that happiness is a choice and you may choose to shift your vibrations at any moment, it will be critical to study yourself and be aware of how you're feeling at all times. Emotions like anger and frustration eat our organs gradually and often. We do it to ourselves and choose to feel this way. Most time with no regard to our own health. If this doesn't scare you into being mindful, then I don't know what will. Most disease of the body is caused by negative feelings such as resentment. Disease overall just means dis-ease or off the body. You are, in the literal sense, feeling not at ease. This kind of discomfort will do damage in the long run, so if you want to prevent aging or decay anytime soon, avoid some of these emotions which are bad for you. Jealousy, resentment, bitterness, envy, anger, frustration, sadness, sorrow, guilt, spite, malice, any emotion even positive in excess and or obsessively. This may or may not include ailments such as depression or types of mental illness, but feelings of these depressive emotions in the long run may cause negative effects on the body's organs. People are usually not that self-aware or analytical to study and observe their behavior and how they react to the world. Every emotion triggers us to behave a certain way, which causes an effect which affects something else in our lives. Everything has a never-ending chain reaction, and sometimes we have to be aware of how we are feeling. The reason we should is because we are powerful beings. You make such a difference in this world and need to realize your worth if you haven't already. Everyone is connected in some way, and if you choose to shout atop the mountains or smile at the sun, every sensation you are feeling makes a change on earth. It is not pertinent as to how big or small of a change you make. As long as you are living and breathing, you will continue to make an impact. The irrelevancy is chasing the waterfalls of an illusion. You may see the rainbow in front of the falling waters, but the rainbow is just that, an illusion. You approach the water and reach your arm out into it, feeling nothing but water. The rainbow, which you once perceived to be, is only light. You once before saw yourself as nothing and didn't realize that you were part of the light all along. What I mean is overall the dream you once chased growing up is probably no longer within sight, but only because you were going after something that probably didn't exist, or at least existed in your younger self. I cannot even remember how many wild dreams I've had growing up. Looking back, I do realize why time heals everything and shows you what you are really missing and needing to look forward to. The past illusions are no longer relevant to my existence, and I choose not to focus on them any longer. To achieve alignment within yourself, you must realize what I've just said and compare it to your experience on earth and see what it is you need to let go of and what you need to take with you on your journey. 
Once you let go of the things you realize are only a rainbow illusion, you will begin to feel aligned to the path of not only inner peace and happiness, but a fulfilled purpose within your life which you never experienced before. Try this meditation if you need an extra boost throughout your day. Then I posted the link to one video. ASMR. Oops. Oh, that was my finger flutter. I didn't realize my volume was on. ASMR has helped with finding my alignment and purpose in so many ways and even beyond what relaxation videos do. I have found that inner peace which cannot be found simply by making videos. You have to dig beneath the facts, cod, the facade of the surface and explore yourself truly, like peeling an onion. To know yourself is really the greatest blessing on earth, for you have eternal peace with this newfound knowledge and self-awareness. To know the self is to know all. And once you discover where you come from and where you go when your time is done here, it is the greatest peace and knowing of all. Many people come to this planet to spread their light among others and do nothing more, as that is their only task. If you can manage to figure out why you are here, there is nothing else you need to do but focus on your task, for you will know what to do and to expect a loving return home for your soul. Part of this awareness has helped me achieve my desired fulfillment, as I am an analytical Virgo who loves to venture into the unknown worlds of information. I am surprised by my endless curiosity. It hasn't killed me now and I still haven't quenched my thirst to know more. So long as I continue having this vitality, my energy will never die within, and my fire will continue to burn bright regardless of opinion, for it is just that, an opinion. To judge someone is to judge yourself, as we are a part of one another on separate destinies. We choose how we feel, remember. Choose to love your fellow humankind, for they are part of the incredible road ahead as you are. We all meet at the intersection when it's over. but venture off into various paths. Do not judge their journey for their learning like you until we reach to the Almighty. No one shall know the true meaning of life, but we can try and figure it out while we are here. This mystery alone makes me excited and looking forward to all that is to come in the several years. Life is a maze. Venture and explore your purpose. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad I did this. The last vlog, ASMR videos, the relaxation phenomenon. Hi poopsies, that is the phrase I commonly use in the beginning of my YouTube videos to refer to my subscribers and viewers watching. ASMR has been a blessing in my life, not only through the plethora of wonderful videos countless ASMR artists have created, but through the massive change in my life thanks to the idea I had to start recording relaxation videos. There is never a day I don't thank the ASMR community for what it has done to provide for me and for the ability to be able to reach out to many people and be their helping hand in times of need. I wish I could spend all the time in the world just thanking every single one of you for being there for me when I needed you the most. I feel as though I have made friends with all of you in some way, contacting you through the comments and social media. I became thrilled by the idea of doing something that I love and doing it from the comfort of my own home. I've always had a pull to help people and even thanks to technology there was a way to do it without having to physically go somewhere. Not counting collaboration videos, of course. Then I posted a video. For example, take a video like this. I'm reaching out, trying my best to be a helping hand for someone who may feel under the weather. Even if we are not in front of each other, the fact that there is someone there with you virtually giving you some form of comfort may assist in your quicker recovery. The mind is a powerful, magical way of making us believe what is not there. So after a while of watching, you forget that it is only a previously made video posted for many to see. This is the science and art of ASMR, which I've learned to fall in deep love with, and I refuse to look back. Now for those of you new here. What really is ASMR? It stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. It is the tingling feeling you experience when you listen to specific stimuli such as a soothing voice of a lady at the post office or watching your friend tapping their nails in a cardboard box aimlessly. For some people it doesn't make any sense. For others it is a new way of looking at the world and delighting in the senses of sound and pleasant tangible sensations. I oftentimes feel sorry for those who do not experience tingles as avid viewers would call the feeling of having ASMR in the brain. It has certainly helped me get plenty of well-needed night's rest and relieve daily stress of life. I could not imagine my world without it and don't know what I would have done had I discovered this YouTube community at another time. The fact is this, people love ASMR. It is never evolving and constantly growing and shifting region of the internet which has expanded into the celebrity world with the recent Super Bowl ad featuring Zoe Kravitz and numerous Vanity Fair ASMR videos of different celebs tapping on random objects. I really do admire how far this community has come and always knew it would be a worldwide sensation. Just refer back to my interviews of 2012 and 2013 and you will see the proof in the pudding. Many ASMR creators who first began in 2011 also knew that there was something special about this new discovery. 
There had to be more research done on the subject. Now books like Idiot's Guide to ASMR and Brain Tingles are being created in partnership with Curious Minds and Passionate ASMR just like to help expand outreach of the overall message. Brain Tingles, a book that featured a few of my opinions, delves on how different ASMR triggers can be enjoyed in the process behind which sounds would be best for beginners who want to find out for themselves what they prefer when watching these videos or even experiencing it in real life. Overall, ASMR still has a long way to go. We still do not know why exactly we feel ASMR in the brain, which translates into the rest of our bodies. Where does this tingling even come from? What part of the brain is specifically activated? And most important of all, why? Is it really so that we could discover this feeling, paste a name onto it, and allow humanity to take a chill pill for a while? Would our world be more hectic if it were not for this discovery? At the very least, we know it is thanks to all of those brave founding fathers of ASMR who were willing to stand up, announce what they feel, and be called a weirdo later on. I had no way of knowing what this was when I felt it for the first time, neither did anyone else, but we do know now we can work together and perfect the image to the best of our ability and destroy the strange stigma behind it which many still have yet to unfold. I conclude by welcoming you to my brand new website in this first original blog post. If you are new here, feel free to browse around and check out my numerous services which I have to offer you through the ASMR content and tarot readings alike. That was back when I only offered tarot at the beginning. I love you with all my heart and look forward to more to come. Be sure to sign up for my monthly newsletter if you're interested as well as for updates and future private ASMR videos. Here's a picture I captured the other day in my backyard of a blue jay. Actually, I believe this is a scrub jay. <laughs> I was recently corrected on that. That was protecting his nest. He was quite territorial but loved speaking with me, the little chatterbox. So there you have it. Um, those were my blogs. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. This was actually quite fun to read, and I hope you followed along and read along with. And I will see you, poopsies, in the next one. Take care now.